bandits abduct 17 nursing mothers on their way to wedding ceremony in Castina. Gunmen suspected to be bandits have reportedly kidnapped no fewer than 17 married women in the Fascari local government area of Castina State. According to the Castina Post, the women were intercepted on Thursday on their way to a wedding ceremony. The incident happened when the women were on their way from Unguwa Rami village to Gari in Migura town to attend a wedding ceremony. This newspaper quoted a source as saying, the source stressed that all women were carrying babies at the time they were abducted and the source revealed that the one woman and her baby were released by the bandits due to the ill health of the baby. A resident of the area further disclosed that the security situation in the area had deteriorated. He added that all the villages in the western part of Fascari town were deserted due to the activities of the bandits, adding that it is only Bilbis town that is left. He noted that if no concrete action was taken in the next few weeks to correct the situation, Fascari town would also be vulnerable. Kastuna is one of the states most affected by terrorism and banditry in Nigeria's northwest region. On the 11th of December 2020, some bandits kidnapped 344 students of the government Science Secondary School, Kankara. They were released about a week later. Also, on the 19th of December, 18 Islamia students of Ibzurahim Islamaya in Mahuta village, Dandume local government area of the state, were kidnapped but rescued shortly after. My personal opinion. All the protests, <laughs> they should be happening right there like the protests should be happening in the north like the northern people i don't know what they need to do but they need to pull up because their leaders are not doing it for them they need to wake up because um it's their fight at this point it's safe to say nigeria is divided and each region will have to fight their own fight because we can't depend on this government so this process that is so rampant not even rampant in the south the northern part of nigeria they need to do times 10 of it because it's worse there. Are they not tired? Because there is no way. There is no way. Absolutely no way. No way. That such things of this gravity will happen consistently in the south of Nigeria. And, and Nigerians will just, they'll just sit at home. Absolutely not. It can't happen. And it's just so weird because it's like, the northern part of Nigeria is like, you can't even, there's no general sort of idea of what it's like. Like, there's no general idea. Like, it's a whole different country. It's a whole different system. It's a whole different dynamic to how people live and all that. Like, they need to be having this process. They need to go and be like, bruv, to the government, you can't continue doing this and just not doing anything about it. Boys are being kidnapped every single time. They're being attacked every single... Like, what? Like, are you actually joking? And it's just such a regret. Like, Nigeria, like, I understand. Context of history. Nigerians, you know, especially the big tribes, they were desperate for independence. But, wow. We literally saw that birthright for these people to... to, to I don't even know. Because now... The government is negotiating... <laughs> with bandits with the money generated in the southern part of the country they even the fact is his, historically the amalgamation of the southern pectorate and the northern pectorate was because the southern part of Nigeria was making so much money that they needed to join the two together so it made sense because the northern part of the country fine they had their trade they had their you know culture of cattle bringing whatever but it was not up to what like 10 percent of the revenue that the southern part of nigeria was bringing and of course frederick lord lugard wherever he is he's the one who put this put all this together and that's why from even from before 1960 the southern part of nigeria was joined to the northern part just for economic gains because they knew that you know what for us to control and again the northern part of the country is huge a lot of people so that was a huge you know mass of population for the british to control but then they were like, we can't keep funding the oppressions of, you know, colonialism. And of course, they colonized the South. And we're like, you know what? We will take the revenue of the South because the South was producing so much that they were like, you know what? We're going to take a fraction and use that and take care of the northern part of Nigeria. So realistically, 
according to history, the northern part of Nigeria and the southern part have nothing, nothing in common. They have nothing to do with each other, apart from wars and whatever. But in terms of coexisting, absolutely not. And of course, the northern people will agree to it because, <laughs> excuse me, with the with with the amount of riches that the south has, there's why would we not you know freeload off them? And of course, you know with the compromise of the Yorubas and the Igos, their desperation for independence against, you know, British rule made them actually sign an agreement for indirect British rule. Given the fact that the Northern people would have more seats and power, I keep saying this, and we've got to remember where the genesis of all this is happening. Because honestly, not to sound insensitive to this, but there's so much the Southern people can do. Like, we don't, we don't care. We have our own problems, first of all. And number two, it's not our responsibility to drink Panadol on their, on their case, on their matter. No, they need to go and fix it. They need to go and riot. They need to go and protest. Because what? Everybody is on their own. Everybody is on their own. So I don't understand what is going on. Because personally, as much as it hurts, it's not the PC politically correct answer to say this but what what should i do what can we do it's none of our business talk to your government because in our side that's what we're trying to do because we have to hold these people accountable not say we're perfect in any way but them lot they need to step up because i don't know what they're doing they need to go and riot because we're not going to do it for them we're not going to do it for them and if they want things to continue like that fine but i don't know how long they're willing to wait how long they're willing to be pushed because God forbid this nonsensical nonsense cannot happen in the southern part of Nigeria. Absolutely not. There's going to be an outbreak of violence and civil unrest because ex- how can that happen? No way. Again, going back from what we need to learn going forward, never compromise. Never ever compromise. No one has the right to keep, no one has monopoly to anything. No one has the right to keep you hostage. Collect sense. Collect sense. Use your HQ. Use your HQ and go and protest. Because if you want to live in this country and want your children and generations to be in this same country and you want them to thrive, you cannot be quiet. Because they will pay. They will pay. Because you cannot expect politicians that are older than the actual country itself to be treating the country and its citizens with respect that is too high of it's sad it's really really sad and i don't know what's the solution them lot over there in another part of the country they need to go and protest they need to because honestly being very frank the southern people have nothing and there's nothing that they can do the southern people, they can use social media. They will make things trend. If the southern part of Nigeria decided that something will trend this night, especially with the use of Twitter, it will trend. So the northern part of the country need to go and make this news trend with their Twitter account. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they need to do it. Put what you think in the comment section below. And do not forget to like and subscribe.